to Cocktail History, a new series that we're doing. Well, not so new anymore. I think we're on like week six, five, yes. six. Yeah. Um, where we take a little bit of county history and apply a little cocktail history and mix up a, a cocktail from days of yore. Ooh, yes. I'm Stephanie Kibler, director of the Freehorn County Historical Museum, Library, and Village. This is Risha Lilienthal, coordinator of our collections and exhibits here at the museum. And today we're bringing you the grasshopper. Yay. I had, I had not had a grasshopper in like forever. I mean, honestly, can't even begin to tell you when. I've never had a grasshopper and it's supposed to be chocolatey. Right? Well, minty and chocolatey. Minty, yeah. So I was going to share this later on, but oh. I'm going to segue into this right now. There is um, the um, bar that created the Grasshopper is in New Orleans, where it mm -hmm. seems to be where a lot of bars, a lot of cocktails were mm -hmm. created was in New Orleans. It's called Tujax. It's spelled T-U-J-A-G-U-E, apostrophe, yeah, it's Tujax. Oh, is that like the French kind of origin probably? Maybe. Um, but the current day owner uh, made the statement that it's not a really strong drink, so if you give your nine-year-old a sip of this mint chocolate chip drink, it's not like giving them a sip of bourbon. That made me think back to when I was probably about 12 years old, and we were having a family gathering. Um, my sister was here from California with her family, and, and it was my younger sister who would have been probably nine. I was probably 12, and my niece would be 12. And we were having dinner at the Old Mill in, in Austin owned by Vern and Mary Busho at the time, who were friends with my sister. And after dinner, the adults ordered a grasshopper, a Brandy Alexander, and a pink squirrel. Aww. And it was the first time ever we were, each of us kids were allowed to have a little oh taste of goodness. each of those. And the grasshopper was one of my favorites. Oh. And I made, that may be the last time I've had a grasshopper. Wow. Yeah. That's, you were 12. I'm not that old, but okay. <laughs> Wow! <laughs> anyway, we uh, digressed there a little bit. Uh, so in 1919, New Orleans, at Two Jacks, mm -hmm. uh, the, the uh, bartender there dreamt up the rich mint chocolate dessert cocktail known as the Grasshopper. So it's creme de mint, creme de calca, creme de calco, and cream. Modern day version uses ice cream. This is the 1919 version. Oh, well, sure. Yeah. So it's not the frozen one. Yeah. So, are you mixing today again? Yes, I'll mix. So, what do we need? We need ice cream? Ice in our cocktail shaker. Ooh, we get to shake it again? Mm hmm. And we're going to use the strainer today. Ooh, ooh. It's a fancy thing. Uh, Should I just probably stall? Good. No, that's probably good. You have to leave some space so it can I shake guess. a little. Um, so we're going to add per drink, we're going to mix two drinks again, like we usually do. Uh, and we are going to add, um, three quarters ounce of white creme de calco. That's so it'll be one, one and a half. half. So it's going to be oh. one and one. Oh, this is the, a half. I think so. Cool. I think that's how that works. Well, that's how I out. use it. <laughs> That's the Bubble. creme de cacao, and that's chocolatey. Uh -huh. um, and then we're gonna do uh, one and a half of the creme de mint, so three quarter ounce for each beverage. So one and a half of those. Ooh, this is super green. I know. So, so I originally picked up a bottle of Godiva chocolate liqueur, thinking this would be really yummy. Um, it's a little richer chocolate flavor, but then I realized it's gonna turn it oh, it's a really funny bad. color because it's brown, so. See, that's the color I thought absinthe was gonna be. Oh, yes, no, it's not that color. And then we're going to do a quarter fluid ounce of heavy cream, which will, so we're gonna use a half ounce of heavy cream. Yeah, okay. Oh man, look at that, so smooth. I'm a professional. I have to have cream in my coffee every morning. Oh. And then we're gonna shake that up. Yes. 
So the reason we picked, oh, you had to hold your, error, error. Miss out. <laughs> Can't even miss that off. <laughs> Sorry about that. Learning curve. We had a little uh, explosion. Hold, hold your leg out tight. <laughs> So originally we picked this beverage today um, after we had some conversation on our Freeborn County timeline exhibit that we're yeah. creating. And um, one of the things that popped up was the grasshopper plague of 1876. Yes. And it, that happened in August of 1876. Earlier that summer, um, I was looking at the research that our love, oh, Oh shoot, I was oh. going to use the strainer, I apologize. Okay. Um, but earlier in that summer, the research that our librarian, Linda, lovely Linda Evenson, gave us, uh, mentioned a little girl named Dora who got lost. And there was a search for, oh, cream too. So we're going to do a cheat on this. We'll come back to the little girl lost. Okay. Uh, since we don't have ice cream, we're doing a little dollop of whipped cream just to kind of make it a little more festive. Yay. Oh, I didn't do that very nice. I, oh, I didn't do that very nice. I should have <laughs> let the ice cream crow do it. Doesn't really look the greatest, but. It'll taste good though. So that is that is the original 1919 recipe for the grasshopper. Super simple, super tasty. Okay, do a little cheers here and then we'll go back to our story. Oh yes, that is. It's like it's like mint chip ice cream, and it's like it feels Christmassy too. It yeah. does feel Christmassy, and it's nice and green, and has it's that Christmas. Holiday. Yeah, it would be a great um, after dinner drink mm -hmm. for a holiday celebration. Be a super fun way to greet your guests at the door Ooh. when they arrive. Yeah. Okay, so back to our little lost girl. Little, little girl. Her name was Dora Schoen or Schoen. I'm not sure how you would say it. But um, a whole search party went out for her and they found her just sleeping, just sleeping in some woods area. And uh, I, I was wondering if she wasn't sleeping around some grasshopper eggs possibly. Oh, probably. I feel like that would be really gross. The, the, the research was interesting when they were talking about being able to walk through the fields and actually seeing the grasshopper eggs yeah. laying in the fields. Um, so they appeared in 1876, like we said, mm -hmm. and in September, there was a, um, I suppose it was kind of like a town hall meeting, really. They called it a convention uh, because there were serious, serious fears that the plague would prove so disastrous that the county would depopulate. Oh, wow. That it would wipe everything out and people would leave oh, the well, county. Oh, crops and stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so they held this convention and I'm going to read this verbatim in accordance with suitable notice because you have to give notice if you're going to do a town hall type meeting. The speeches that were made reminded on one of the dark days of the rebellion when reinforcements were wanted to fight the common enemies of the country. Mr. J.T. Hall declared that he was not to be destroyed by grasshoppers, though ground was peppered with grasshopper eggs. He proposed next year to put in a full crop and use all the means possible that should come to his knowledge to exterminate these unwelcome pests. Wow. So it sounds like they rallied together as a county, as a community. Against the grasshopper. And, and took care of the grasshopper plague. Right. And the county did not depopulate. Well, and I know I was reading about the, the winter just after was apparently pretty, pretty rough. A uh, severe snowstorm happened in April, and so they predicted that that killed a lot of them yes. too. And they were really happy about that. And they said it was, um, what did they say? They said there was much ingenuity displayed in the invention of engines of death for the unwelcome insects. So, so they really wanted so them gone. What, what do you suppose the engines of death were that they? Well, because they didn't have pesticides back then. No. Although I do have, I do, I should have brought this in today. I actually have a um, notebook that my grandmother, um, Lagesson, kept um, 
and it had details on uh, all the gardens, what was in each garden, all the shrubs, mm -hmm. and pest control, and the things oh. that she used within her home um, to mix her little pest cocktail, ha. spin, <laughs> and um, get rid of the things that were eating her garden. I could have brought that in well, and see, shared that. Like for critters, I know rhubarb is a good thing to keep them out of your garden, like the leaves. Because mm. that's poisonous. They're poisonous, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I'm wondering if that maybe that's why that's why rhubarb is planted at the edge of your garden. Probably. I bet that's, that's smart. smart. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll have to for at some point I'll bring my grandmother's recipe book oh, in and, cool. and we can look at it. It's it's really a fun book because it's handwritten, so she goes into detail. So perhaps they came up with lye would have probably been in households. Mm. And I would think that would Didn't lie isn't lye something that is bad for people though too, like to be around. You have to be careful with it, although they soak lutefisk in lye. That's true. Um I feel like lye though is one of the things that people contribute to the uh, Sale of winch, witch hunts. Oh, is interesting. The use of lye. That's one of the theories. Hmm. So. Interesting. Yeah, I know my mom. We had lye at home. It was used for really tough stains, things like that. Huh. Lye used to be used to make soap, I believe. So yeah, just you know, scrub those hands and, and lye. Yeah. I think other ingredients went in. Oh, yeah, that's good. <laughs> so. Uh, the other fun piece I thought, so the grasshopper plaid thing was very fascinating to me. I had no clue we'd had that here in Fremont County. Um, and again, thanks to Linda Evenson. Yes. Um, she does a lot of great research for us and uh, and is doing a fantastic job pulling data for mm -hmm. our Fremont County timeline, mm -hmm. which will be um, a three-dimensional, yeah. super fun exhibit once we reopen after COVID. Um, but the other one I thought was kind of fun little piece that popped out. Um, so the chocolate or the ice cream piece of the grasshopper started, they think, in Wisconsin. Wow. Land of dairy oh, sure. and land of supper clubs. Oh. Um, so they feel that, that the, the cocktail got the ice cream addition to it and was served in supper clubs. And that started in Wisconsin, our, our neighbor. Oh. Um, they wanted to make it a little fancier for the supper club Wisconsin audience. Wisconsin and making cocktails fancier, like the old fashioned last week and now the grasshoppers. Yes, although I think I prefer this version than the ice cream version. I've never had the ice cream I like version, the little so sipper version. I like version. this. Yeah, this is very nice. I, I still, I love that it's a color. Yeah, we really haven't done anything that's been fun color. Mm -hmm. Well, the Corp Survivor 2 was a little purpley yeah. and then we had the, the, the dry, dry ice, ice. The, the, Missed, yeah. yeah. So that was cool. Fun. That was fun. Um, anyway, yeah. Uh, this is a grasshopper. Um, we recommend trying this. It's a it's a really nice little after dinner drink, and uh, smells good too. Smells good. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. If you like more information on Fremont County timeline or the grasshoppers or anything with just about anything, County. come on. Uh, I guess you can't come in right now. Sorry. Give us a call. We can do research over the phone. Uh, we can function with email. We can do Zoom conferencing with you if you have questions. Um, we are doing some additional YouTube videos too. So if there's more you'd like to see or um, somebody you'd like to see us highlight, we're open to those suggestions. Yeah. But uh, in the meantime, I guess stay safe, stay healthy. And uh, cheers, everybody.